Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Mendes. Welcome to Gwen's Bookish Ramblings. So, last week we covered Exile's Valor, and this week I'm going to be talking about Take a Thief. Here's the thing about Take a Thief. Um, I have seen in one or two places Take a Thief effectively treated as part of a trilogy or part of a series, or part of a something with the Exiles Honor and Exiles Valor duology. Um, there is reason to do this in that while this is Skiff's story, there are in fact two major lead characters in this, Skiff being one and the other being Harold Alberic, who was, after all, the primary hero and lead character in uh, Exiles Valor, Exiles Honor. Um, of course, yes, Exile's Valor was 50% Alberic and 50% Queen Selene, but that's neither here nor there. The thing is, though, that this is really not part of that. This is its own thing. This is Skiff's story, Skiff's background, and Skiff is, Skiff is a character that we first met, if you read these in order of publication, approximately, uh, that in the upcoming trilogy, Arrows of, uh, the Arrows trilogy, starting with Arrows of the Queen. Uh, and Skiff is a fairly important character in that. Um, he is a herald in that book, well, a trainee herald, and a whole bunch of other things. And this book is the book that steps in and says, here's how Skiff became a thief. Here's why Skiff became a thief. Here's how Skiff became who he was, and other things of that nature. But before we talk about Skiff, I'm going to take a moment or two, possibly longer, to talk about By the Sword again. Now, if you'll recall, in By the Sword, there are three parts, three books, as uh, Mercedes Lackey has termed them. Book one, Carowin's Ride, is set when Carowin is in her early mid teens. That is, Carowin, who is approximately the same age as Selene, uh, her story starts before Exile's Honor, as I said then. The thing about uh, and the thing about this is that this book, by the sword, covers a time period stretching from before Exile's Honor, and all the way through to just after the Arrows trilogy. So, um, as I said then, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be breaking this book up and reading each section, or doing each section of By the Sword, approximately when it's supposed to fit temporally. Well, we did Carowin's Ride last time, although I may go into more detail with this uh, following upon uh, following upon Arrow's Fall, which is the last of the Arrow's trilogy. But the next book of By the Sword is Two-Edged Blade. And in Two-Edged Blade, we see Carowin here who and Elden who is her life bond. Uh, life bonds, of course, as I believe I have mentioned before, are basically soulmates. Um, and so she meets Elden, who is a herald, and that's his companion. Uh, and the thing is that Two-Edged Blade is set several times is is set several years after the end of book one carowin's ride this is set after carowin has become a professional mercenary what she was training for and uh they're fighting along the carsite border and through various events she winds up having to split up from the rest of her crew the rest of the people that she had been escaping this battle which had fallen apart on them, uh, she wound up completely separated from them and met up with Elden, who had been also, who had been caught by the Carsites. And for a goodly section of this book, 
It's just Carowin, Eldon, and uh, his companion, Rafa, as they try to get out of Kars. And they fall in love, and uh, there is much love-making, and all kinds of interesting stuff. And at the end of it, they have to split up, because it turns out that the Karsite priestesses somehow have a way to track Carowin uh, by the sword Need. That is the magical sword that uh, her grandmother, Kethri Varys, had carried back in the uh, Vows and Honor uh, trilogy series thing. That sword that basically drags somebody off to rescue whatever woman is nearby. Because it's woman's magic, these priestesses can track her with it. So in order to ensure that Elden can get away and to possibly manage to get away on her own because... They would be looking for three for two people and a horse, and instead they would she can travel by herself, and Eldon can travel on his horse, and she'll pull them away, and so on and so forth. They split up. She makes it back to her company to find out that things have fallen apart, and that the person who's taken over is frankly a terrible person to be put in charge of a mercenary company, and. Through a series of, uh, and the woman who wound up in charge of the company, in the meanwhile, basically drove them into the ground. Um, and Ardana, who is the woman who took over the company, uh, like I said, drove them into the ground. Carowin has to flee, uh, because she basically quits. She says, I'm severing my contract. I'm allowed to do that under Mercenaries Guild law. I'm severing my contract. I'm getting out of here. And in the end, after various adventures, she winds up being played that the company, the Skybolts, track her down and put her in charge of them because everybody basically followed upon Carowin and said, no, we're severing our contracts. We don't want to work for you anymore, Ardana. And there's a whole lot of other stuff that goes on, but in effect, Karen winds up being put in charge of the Skybolts. And that's the end of part two of this book, uh, which, again, is happening on a background of the stuff that's going on, uh, I would assume during Skiff's story, Take a Thief, and the Arrows trilogy. So, let's go to Take a Thief, now that I've eaten up way too much time on Carowin, and talk about Take a Thief. This is a pretty bog-standard story, um, when you come down to it, about a poverty-stricken boy who winds up becoming a thief because, frankly, it's the best option in his situation. He's very poor, his uncle is abusive and horrible, there is nobody to help him, and the only person who does help him is Basie, who, you know, you can evoke Shades of Fagin or anyone else who is, you know, running a collection, a small collection of child thieves, but the fact is, Basie is fundamentally a good person. He's a thief, yes, but He's kind to the boys who thief for who steal for him. He trains them, and if they find themselves, you know, a way out and make their own way in the world, he is perfectly happy to see them go. If they're happy and well, he's happy. And so Skiff, who has been barely scraping by because his uncle Skiff's uncle runs a tavern. And it's a terrible tavern. It has cheap, crappy food that really ought to be killing people. It's in the bad part of town. And his, like I said, his uncle is abusive and horrible and all kinds of things. Skiff is just barely scraping by even with a place to sleep. And so Basie, he manages to get himself brought to Basie because he finds another boy who is stealing from the house of a very rich man, 
and manages and asks that boy to teach him, and that boy brings him to Basie, and Basie agrees to take Skiff on. And Skiff winds up apprenticed to Basie, and in point of fact, Basie winds up filling in for the role of affectionate father for Skiff. And then everything takes a turn for the horrific when somebody burns down the building, Basie and Skiff, who Skiff's mentor, and the two boys that the mentor was taking care of at that moment in time, somebody burns that building down. And the thing is, for Skiff, it's like seeing two younger brothers and his dad have been burned alive. And Basie couldn't have gotten out because his legs had been cut off at the knee during the Tedril Wars. So, Skiff spends a significant portion of this book seeking revenge. He wants to get back at whomever it was that set fire to the building, but more than that, he wants to find out the person who ordered the fire be set in the first place. He's able to track down the man who did it, but the man who ordered Jass to burn down the building, well, that's another issue. So, in the process of this, Skiff stumbles across Alberic, and the pair of them kind of wind up functioning at cross-purposes for a bit, um, because, of course, Skiff doesn't know that Alberic, because Alberic is running around in his disguise as a as basically a sword for hire, because Alberic does that. We find that out in the Exiles Honor, Exiles Valor series, that Alberic basically wanders around town in his off hours pretending to be a sword for hire in order to find out information from the bad parts of the city about plots and things and stuff. Um, you know, he kind of does a bit of a spy master role at the time. Skiff doesn't know this about Alberic, he just knows that there's a sellsword running around um, who's getting in his way. Alberic doesn't know anything about Skiff except that Skiff is a thief of some kind who keeps on appearing whenever he's trying to figure out what's going on with the child prostitution ring he's trying to break up. And then... Skiff gets chosen, and everything changes, because, of course, it's a shock to the system. Uh, this book is one of, the, one of the few books in this series that really, really hits, unfortunately, hard on one of the few characteristics of, uh, of the Valdemeran companions that is a little hinky, and that is the emotional blackmail. Because, you know, you bond with your companion and your companion loves you so much and you feel love for your companion and it's exultant and wonderful. And if somebody says, but I don't want to be a herald, the companion says, but you have to be, don't you love me? I can break the bond with you, but it will be horrible. Do you want me to suffer? And it's, it's really... It's a little heavy-handed in this book, and it's a little problematic for me in this one book. You know, I, I get the point, but there's... And frankly, as somebody who does often advocate that people should deal with the fact that part of the reason why so many creepy things work in romance novels is because we as the reader know that the person doing the creepy thing has no ill intentions. Um... So, I get it. Simri is one of the good guys, and it is a companion bond, and it's love, and so on and so forth. But it is emotional blackmail. Um, anyways, but Skiff settles in at the Collegium, uh, sets up the personality that we have, that we see for him in the Arrows trilogy, and helps Alberic stop the child prostitution and slave sale ring, and so on and so forth. Um, it's a good book, but it is a little bit, um, unnecessary. It doesn't make Skiff's background more interesting or exciting. Uh, I enjoy it, but it is a smidgen unnecessary. Uh, 
but it's still a fun book. It's a good book, and of course I adore Skiff, and that's everything, so I'll see you all next week.